Hello. This is moving into um, where we actually find inspiration. We find inspiration from nature, but it's big. What are we looking for? Um, last lecture was, was talking about the, the kind of beauty but rigidity of aesthetics of the Mediterranean society in the notion of bella figura, bruta figura as applied to the masculine, the feminine, uh, uh, the public, the private, the, the, the uh, spect actor, the spectator and actor moving across the piazza. Where do we find, and this will continue with the whole landscapes, but as we move out of CAD printing from ideas and ideas that you have placed in uh, your sketchbooks, oops, there it is, sketchbooks, which are um, places of inspiration. Um, here's some stage settings uh, that I was stimulated to do um, uh, uh, notions of what is reality out there, um, subway uh, portraits, uh, notes, copious notes I take on everything, structuring, and then uh, when I get into designing structures, it's there also. Um, all these influences have to come in because the meter on your life is ticking and it's silly to pay someone to have a ticking meter when you do not need their services. Um, you just need the recursive ability to make your own self-criticism, to read your own books, to forge your own um, way through economies, to shift gears and change when the economy changes. Um, these are necessary. So, um, I go to, you see that I also like Merrill's. Um, Dezine is the Dutch uh, magazine on aesthetics. Um, and it, it, it gives me, I go to this f source, yes, a critical source, because I find it fecund. I find it um, helpful. <coughs> I find a lot of inspiration from this site. Am I going to derive from this site? Um, uh, so I find these kind of, it's a Dutch magazine and the Dutch have perfected their design style since coming to terms with the collapse of an empire in Indonesia and elsewhere. Um, tiny, tiny little country of just, what, 10 million people or a little more. Um, having an influx of the immigrants from those society, putting them in the slabs in the park, the modernist slab housing, um, coming to terms with that, and above all, coming to terms with the rising sea levels, which as a lowlands country they've encountered for centuries. Um, so who would think better of change and so forth um, than that? Uh, Ikea and Kanye West reveal details of a new project uh, to build the first 3D printable houses that people, um, oops, I'm floating this on top, sorry, uh, float on top, um, benches woven in 3D printed concrete, wiki glasses, you can find it out there and then print it. Uh, 3D print a house in Milan, doesn't look so cool. This is the best minuscule proportion, micro houses, uh, concrete honey to form architectural structures, using biology as a structural force. Uh, pr uh, parametric is dealing with parameters in your design, mathematical um, searching for the parameters of, uh, of a point on a so-called curved surface, which is not really curved. It's a minuscule uh, triadic shapes within. Uh, let's see how this goes. Explains how a house, um, beautiful house, uh, a whole building at a go. Um, uh, what are the methods? Uh, what, what different forms are we up for this? You know, certainly we don't have the money that we have in uh, architecture, but I go to this store to look for um, the 
the change in attitude and in design from new technologies. There's no um, uh, shot of the printer. There's the ground plan. Let's go back. Um, I wanted to go to 3D printing again. Um, uh, uh, Dazine is a go-to place. Let's go to 3D house printing. Printing. Um, goes over right away. We looked at that. Um, this is building a house not with a machine separately, but right there on the on the site. Let's see it um, in situ. To be f first house to be three D printed in one piece in Westerlo, Belgium. Kind of nice modernist house. There's the machinery that got into making it. Um, this is why I am intensely even feel a moral obligation to teach you these new technologies um, because we are designers in this class. We're designing with a capital D. Um, great innovations, interesting side panel, two-story versions. Um, not a bad house on the inside. We can see the walls as they're layered in 3D printing, um, the wooden structures, first 3D printed community related stories. Here we go. Um, that's the inside. Um, these are recommended stories. Um, here's in Austin, that's America. So let's try it out. Um, certainly there are CNC, um, computer aided cutting of st structures. That's a beautiful house. Um, so I want you guys to go to these sources to look at these um, wonderful things, um, what people are doing out there, that is very cool. Um, with inclusion of wood in here, here's the 3D printing material. Will it lower costs? Will it raise costs? What will it actually do to the cost of the, of the structure? Um, uh, so um, uh, we can see kind of the employment of these design notions such as datum included in that. Um, here's the laying of the 3D structure. I'm having you make tiny, tiny things so that even for 15, 20 bucks, you can get, not required, but you can get a black nylon ring or earrings that you made. Um, you have this sense of, of accomplishment. Here's setting up the um, machine on the site. Um, let's go back um, to that um, that notion of, of house. House of wood, straw, and cork is eco-friendly resident in the Italian landscape. Um, that was the first one we saw. Um, are there others? Certainly 3D printed furniture. Let's do that. Um, coming down from the house scale to, um, come on, hon. Uh, 3D printed furniture. Something lower in cost than a house. Um, Print your city returns recycled food containers into street furniture. Um, here's carpet design by Zaha Hadid. Um, um, 61. Yes, 3D printed designs by Zaha Hadid. Let's do this. Um, she was a master of parametric design. Look at how beautiful that chair is. Um, we have 3D printed uh, costuming at um, the Met Museum in their costume display exhibition galleries who always have some great shows. 
So we'll go there next, but look at these wonderful chairs. Um, sculpted in CAD, outputted and 3D printed um, by a woman who was obsessed with parametric form, made her early career on all of this. Look at this almost bone-like structure. Jenny Wu. Um, beautiful. Um, using tree forks instead of... So I love Dazine. Um, atelier design from um, um, uh, waste. Um, cacao shell waste is the 3D printing material. So think of materials. What, as we can see, we can use black nylon as well as gold or silver um, this is part of the the obsession of form let's back up um, are we there are we there are we there Jenny Wu um, it's not live um, all these necklaces that we are making um, these are shoes um, Kind of interesting. Uh, these are chairs. Chairs. Let's see what the costuming is. Things that get to be there's uh, flexible. They they put in little hinges in this. Um, uh, uh, it is baroque looking, um, but it is uh, each one of these has a hinge a hinge to it. Um, uh, let's see what quickly on Vimeo. Okay, we have the first uh, batch of the dress coming through. So again, Let's looking for order the out of the disorder, out of the order of placing it upon the body, using color, it's black, not white, checking out the hinging, breaking all the hinges, and so forth. Um, uh, seeing the hinge structure, is it Baroque, is it simple, is it complex? It's very expensive. Um, but what will states will we get to um, democratize this stuff uh, later? Um, let's go back. I'm trying to go back. It's not behaving. To these beautiful forms by Zaha Hadid. Um, uh, shoes, um, Jenny Wu, uh, uh, sculptures resembling vertebrae. I'm back there. Let's go back. Um, so let's proceed forward. Um, let's try and um, get around to looking again, backing up, uh, and that's design. Um, one of my favorite go-to of curated work. I agree with these people's aesthetics. Um, high, in general, high rarefied aesthetics, um, avoiding the kitsch, uh, developing a taste. But let's go on to um, uh, getting back and understanding the, the house level stuff. Um, this is a walk around the Roman Forum where I took the golden section wire thing uh, reference lines in and on my Samson. I moved around. I filtered it further in um, a program called Studio Artist, which applies AI level filters to it. This is the cross hatching filter to all of that. I'm looking for uh, within the static. Uh, ruins, beautiful ruins affected by time. I'm looking for systems of orders. This church was built out of parts constructed from uh, the ruins there. This is the Arch of Titus, uh, Roman 2000 years ago. This maybe is 1500 years old or no, it's actually Baroque. So that's only 400, 300 years old. So we see this chaos of history on these things. Um, while moving, I'll open up uh, sketch uh, speech notes and I'll try and 
do the same thing in another medium, the medium of words, and, uh, and spit out these verses, very immediate, very relational to embodiment, uh, senses. I can walk around these sites with the speech notes, which is tremendous, I think. Um, and then I go back and re-edit these things um, and um, uh, kind of leave these in the, the face of oblivion, um, archive in the face of oblivion. Speaking about non-oblivion, this is my application of the rule of thirds golden section on uh, uh, Michelangelo's David in the Academia, L'Academia in um, Firenze, um, again with the working out of this cross-hatching mold, here he is, you've got this push and pull, not just with the surface which is expressed with the lines, but we also with the, um, the form, the body form, all of this establishes kind of a hierarchy. Um, here's my notion of the stage, what should, could, would happen on an immersive stage. Um, we have the performer, we have the stage. I consider these two separate entities because we can make the stage as an entity, as an AI system. Uh, James Thierry, um, uh, Chaplin's grandson, uses the stage contraption as another being. Um, transmedia output projection. I can superimpose projections on a stage now with the technology of high lumen projectors, which is really wonderful. I've been doing that for 20 years now. <coughs> and it's a kind of like an art and a science itself. Transmedia input, HCI, what goes in, what wants to be new and cutting edge, magical, participatory, kinesthetic, touchless. Um, tactful, invisible, all of these um, human computer interfaces that go into the environment. And then we have the audience area, these, these kind of uh, separation. Performer is shamanic, a mirror neuron emitter, um, uh, telematic, uh, profound, do not waste my time. You see him or her on the stage and say, do not waste my time. Um, much like the, supposedly we have um, the uh, attention span shorter than a goldfish now, which is seven seconds. Um, so what do we expect of our performers? What do we expect of our audiences? Spectator audience area, that this area is even something. This is the mise-en-scene behind the spectator. Wants to have a collective experience, wants to be where it's at. Contrasting uh, automation. Um, taking the mobile media within that to facilitate the ability to change, to be where it's at. Uh, pervasive feelings of, of YOLO, you only live once, FOMO, fear of missing out. Um, a little danger, a womb-like return to the brothers and sisters communality, the big thumping beat of the, of the, um, of the uh, 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 club the the big bass notes um, is against the audience area it the uh, area wants to be potential exhibiting a potentiality this is perhaps the biggest function of your um, uh, nightclub is is a potential for what for meaning for um, remember that Campbell quote a couple lectures ago People are less concerned about looking and searching for meaning than meaning than the ability to feel really alive. How have you made, facilitated a potential space for feeling alive? This is what, in contrast to our feelings of our Zoom meetings, that we were not alive. We're looking at the strangeness of dozens of faces. We see someone, we have that flaneur idea of the fly on the wall just looking in we can turn off a picture some people put on still images um, we had innovation within it I tried some innovation mixing this with social VR um, doing theater pieces with it having the synchronous element but in general people came up feeling empty um, I heard from a, a young intern that uh, his generation <coughs> kind of wants to avoid social VR because it's more 
limiting. It's it's yet another stopping to to the potential potentiality of com communion. So the nightclub could be on the other side of the spectrum of of VR, uh, kind of limiting yourself to the pate goose with the tube down your throat till your liver explodes. Um, a frustration, tininess, body keeping the score, um, the inability to control the semiotics and the, the idea of what goes outward. Uh, touch with more uh, uh, like um, uh, the, the flaneur in the post-COVID era wants to be the spectator. Um, 360 filmmaking didn't really take turn uh, take off, although we have examples of it. Um, AI filtering of objects, I do a lot of this. There are new surreal things. But I go out there into so-called reality and take and transform. If I had more time standing in front of the David, I would try and sketch him in this setting at the Academia, which was just a block over from where I lived. More um, filtering, filtering of a relative of mine, filtering of relatives on a boat party of mine. Um, colors add into that. Um, and here's my walk across the forum again. There's the Colosseum off in the distance, framed off by the diagonal uh, vanishing point, maybe up here on the second level. It's about 2,000 years old, the profundity of of just the transition of time strike us and so forth. Um, this is the um, funny, funny sculpture in the Vatican. Um, uh, so this is uh, this god surrounded by cherubs. This is a design of mine for an urban vehicle. Uh, again, just filtering off the background so we could see the tonalities in the curved structures of the foreground. Um, does it, the shape ex, uh, speak with, of emotion with emotion coming from the problem of the square? Um, uh, idea of a piece of jewelry, another stage set of mine, more stage sets kind of evolving into houses, um, tiny houses, houses up on stilts, um, I reworked that idea. Um, I took a shot, and uh, part of this class is to use um, your camera. This is the, the famous Fibonacci series stare in, um, in the Vatican, the Vatican Museum, as you enter and you come in. Um, uh, an expression of... of, of infinite geometry, recursively moving in, critically moving in, uh, uh, excursively moving out, implying the universe, implying both things. In one thing, I'm moving around it, trying to gain elevation, attitude. So looking at this interesting um, circular staircase that allows people to go up as it allows them to go down in another separate level is an act of, of recursive and excursive sort of binary contradictions all in one thing that is very beautiful then I put it off symmetry to give it my own balance um, uh, using filters 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 to create dominant patterns we can learn a lot from AI visual AI in cell phones and computers and so forth, but it would kind of be much more fun to actually paint that, to whip up the acrylics, um, which really dry after 10 or 15 minutes, uh, whereas oil dries in a couple weeks, um, to manipulate um, colors, form, balance. This is, again, the problem with the square. How do we get a square to say, um, emotion. This is kind of emotional to me. The, the green square is overcoming the center of the reds. Um, I balance these two against it. Um, does it balance on the canvas? Um, my works, my works, my uh, stage works, um, more of my works 
in this AI filtering. This is my container car structure structures uh, dancer who works inside these um, uh, fiberglass tubing thingies um, and um, portraits. What are we looking at? How can we bake up the figure? Portraits, um, more structures that are eccentric. Are they to be used? Are they to be looked at? What is the only purpose, the purpose is to look at something, um, performs a vital complex um, uh, structure. And yeah, I think that's it. Um, and we go back to uh, 3D printing as we'll go back to um, uh, nervous systems. This is from the nervous system site. This is um, uh, parameters of algorithms that uh, these succeeding um, vertices sort of structure against each other gives it support, gives it a sense of the fragility of growth against the, the, the stability of the shells that it leaves behind. Um, this is our asynchronous t uh, test here. Uh, delayable processing, which we have here. Um, uh, maximum presence would be synchronous, could be online and Zoom, but more importantly would be in the classroom. What would we learn there? We'd have greater conversations, except for the fact everyone wants to be a flaneur, a, basically a fly on the wall. Classroom questioning, people are conditioned to be shy and just shut up and let the class proceed. Uh, dictation, t I tend not to do that because I want a Socratic method, a so Socratic application as we saw in the Mediterranean lifestyle. You have these tools at your disposal. How are you going to rearrange it to, to facilitate your own voice? So you don't refer to the zine magazine for something that might be more tasteful apart from Hello Kitty or the Eiffel Tower that you do rearrange the parts of your life which include intellect, um, the body, embodiment, empathy, all these other good things in combination which um, by form because the parts are greater than the, the assembling of the, uh, the whole is greater than just the assembling of the parts. Um, so we avoid this bean counting that has been racking all of our STEM-based universities, um, which are just focused toward um, capital accumulation. So instead of having a deep joy about making a design form, making a beautiful silver ring, this, that, and the other, you think about your ownership of a BMW before you're 30, that this is translated into fetishization instead of the way you can avoid being the consuming planner and re-enter a landscape that is making, making, solving, solving bigger, more philosophical uh, questions of meaning, uh, meaning against oblivion, identity and freedom, and you can reapply the parts such as this 3D printing toward those ends. Uh, maximum presence, maximum presence, Minimum presence um, test, I avoid just a midterm classroom paper, avoid. But I want you to leave media. I want you to leave your thoughtful reconstruction of maybe hopefully new things for you. Um, this is what we know, um, known by self, unknown by self, open free area, blind area, hidden area, unknown unknowns. Um, unknown by others, unknown by self, these, the bottom left, right, is that famous talk, a famous speech by the Bush's secretary of, I forget uh, his name, kind of a kook, um, we talk about, but the unknown unknowns, um, really is talking about unknown by the self in 2022, did we know COVID was taking us on? Well, the unknown unknown was that we live in complex, seemingly robust, but complex systems, which implies a fragility, as Talib said. So 
um, the bottom right is always accommodating for these black swans. Um, known by self, uh, unknown by others is, is continually eroding under the um, onslaught of, uh, of uh, surveillance. Our cities are surveilled, our public spaces are surveilled, our minds are under surveillance by our clicks, by our lingering over images. Maybe you're obsessed by the uh, Johnny Depp Amber Heard thing, and so TikTok's got you. Uh, they'll measure how long you actually, the AI will, how long you actually dwell on a particular subject. Again, that quote from McLuhan, it's the form. Um, the, the content is that piece of meat that the burglar carries in to dis, uh, distract the watchdog of the mind, the critical mind, and so forth. Um, moving on further, uh, this is the construction of the middle landscape to sort of reinvest in uh, local food production. A dance piece I did uh, with dancers who use the exoskeleton of the fabric to interact with lines and geometrics in the form, having the, the form, the, the beautiful yet chaotic, chaotic form of the performing body with the beautiful and chaotic sort of striking upon a, a projecting surface, my designs, my designs, my designs, uh, dancer in that space touching um, certain aspects of, of that. And let's get, this is lower in quality PDF, but let's get to the notion of um, 3D printable stuff. The ring, metal ring, um, uh, database aesthetics is important for me as a reaction to the world. Um, cities, planning, um, um, there's a new use of slime mold in fight with one of the most mathematically pure um, organisms on earth that tends to find the most efficient um, means of rep uh, replication. So they use it for city planning, putting food sources at the nodes and it would uh, crank out a model of the, the Tokyo subway. Uh, back to bracelets. <coughs> back to form. Here are the two nervous system MIT graduates who made a, a company after this. Parametric forms reapplying um, this idea of, is this a pentagon? I think it is. Yes. Um, reapplied uh, shifting algorithms over the space. The beauty of the parametric jewelry, none, um, well, this gets more literate, uh, uh, biomimicry. Uh, it mimics the leaves and its vascular systems of growth, um, um, which is beautiful in itself, since we often, look at this beautiful um, necklace, often consider these things um, a gorgeous set of earrings um, uh, and again I'm I keep telling you this that design with a capital D has got to be like a gut punch it's got to hit you in the gut immediately as it intersects your time of perception you, you have to go you know whether you made it or you see it or you see a Ferrari or a beautiful motorcycle or a beautiful piece of jewelry or a beautiful dress on a beautiful uh, person um, it's got to be a gut punch. <coughs> From that initial gut punch, we can go out recursively and understand what, how that beautiful item, that well-designed striking item hits you. You can unpack that. But often young people want to go into design uh, uh, with charts and quantification and breaking down. Um, it's really the embodied sense sense of the gut punch. Um, is it beautiful? Is it striking? Did it strike you already? Um, and so forth. Um, rings, uh, nylon rings back to these structures. Um, these bracelets are just gorgeous. I've seen these at parties worn by architect women who were enamored by this um, uh, way of doing things here. The selection of metal items wanted to show you this before we get back to that. Parametric 
lampshades, which I'm doing, um, nothing can sit still for me. Um, I am obsessed with changing what I see. I've been fortunate to have a job that demands that, contrary to the sort of stem bean counting ideal, I'm, I'm into transformation by different means, um, devoting myself and my students, my colleagues, my uh, collaborators, my uh, consumers with their equal share of participation. Um, and I find this uh, engaging. Um, uh, the simple a necklace on this model sort of mimics her hair, um, so we have this immediate gut punch. It's like, what's 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 aligned here? What's unaligned? What's uh, uh, to approach a design object? I contend any work of art, you have to be more like a uh, detective. You're unpacking that initial gut punch, um, the the impression, the embodied impression of that gut punch. So determined this thing resembles the, the curliness of her blonde hair. Um, this is a, a good site. I'm trying to get more into this about um, AI applied to motion. Um, you can reapply finding point clouds and skeletons within even webcams. We can reapply it with um, a, a design on top of the moving body. It works very, very well with dance. Um, more of this, and then designing CNC houses, getting over our so-called housing and aesthetic problem um, by designing houses. Um, this is to this CNC method, uh, computer cutting, is to resemble the the um, veins on a leaf. I have ceramics in here, which they applied. Um, leaves which left their vein marks onto the clay, fired a chemical transformation on that. Um, beautiful, beautiful earrings, um, beautiful necklaces, uh, fragile but also strong. Um, a working out of all of these things in, um, in all forms, films, books, lectures, um, uh, graphics, um, this is back to nervous systems. The shop. Uh, I even like their red nylon here. Uh, red nylon uh, uh, resembling the parametrics of, of design. I'm dwelling on this gang because it's 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 your language. It's your generation's language. This 3D printing um, really wasn't pervasive in my generation. Pro projections. I now have own. 15 to 20 projectors of varying lumen, but uh, my first projector, 1998, 99, was $4,000, and it was 700 lumens. Um, technology, Moore's Law, has expanded these tools, and you, as with your youth, should embrace these tools or be left in the dust, because part of the process of technology, of survivability of jobs, as we found out with that film, is to de-skill people ahead of you in a generation. That's all which is behind the cryptocurrencies, the NFTs, what would, you know, rock and roll, rap music, it's like what would make the older generation angry um, to be de-skilled, to say that these skills are now important. Um, I tend to try to remain youthful and embrace these forms. Look at that, beautiful. These are things I made out of this. Um, uh, rings, bracelets, uh, things like that. Look at the complexity of that bracelet. Is Would it fit an arm? No, it would not. But it could be a beautiful thing hanging. So think not of use, uh, disembed notions of use from your head and get into other sorts of, um, again, with that model, the, the blondness of the sh nylon shape, very inexpensive materials with her own um, black against white here, stripes, pretty well uh, art directed. Look at this black form here, the beautiful earrings. Um, this coral like structure against biomimicry, earrings, rings. Uh, bracelets, um, cups, uh, uh, 
uh, this thingy. I don't even know what it is. I wanted to get back. Here is some of the tools I use in making clay. I'm obsessed with 3D form. I love welding. I love building sets. I love building houses. I love building clay. I love building jewelry. I want to get off of the flatness that tends to alienate us and treat, make us defer or default to that flaneur level of the, of the spectator. Um, 3D form is, is the body keeps the score, so this is the thing that gets me out there. Um, and so clay things, slab work, um, round slab work, roll work, um, uh, wheel work. Um, the Asian aesthetic uh, has allowed for um, these accidents. It's not the garish colors, bold form. It is the subtlety, uh, the recursive in introspection of nature itself, getting back into nature. Uh, Scandinavian design certainly has a kind of response to their bleak landscapes. The bleakness after World War II, um, their embracing of Bauhaus modernity, so Danish, Swedish, Finnish design. Norwegian, the Scandinavians had their moment with, um, still do, do with the modernity. It's a it's an empathetic modernity. Um, Japanese ceramics, Korean ceramics, love them, love them, love that. Their interplay with wabi sabi, which is their version of Taoist version, which is Shinto version of yin yin yang, um, uh, and then into Western influences with the the. This is the Vasily chair by um, Marcel Breuer. I would like you guys to get in touch with um, High Design. I have a Mies van der Rohe Barcelona chair here, which is, describes a perfect circle around the subject in modernist forms. Uh, Annie Albers, uh, uh, wife of Joseph Albers, worked this out. So we see this confluence Bauhaus, Japanese Taoism, ja I mean Japanese Shintoism. Um, Finnish and Danish as two of the the uh, a kind of responding with modernity with clean lines to nature the middle landscape um, again trying to approach the natural not as a as abstracted form the natural within we we keep forgetting we have these natural impulses within um, in this era when we think that. Um, social constructivism is the major through line. We forget our hormones, we forget our uh, inclinations, we forget our own expanses within. Um, these are the women of the Bauhaus. Um, it was a kind of an ecumenical time. Of course, um, they were kicked out by the Nazis and all the boys came over to America to assume positions at uh, architecture at Columbia. Um, Harvard, GSD, um, IIT, uh, is where Mies van der Rohe went, and we tend to forget the women as, as kind of a very natural uh, kind of progressive leftist movement of the Bauhaus in the 20s. 20s in Germany were a very dynamic time trying to reinvent itself, and certainly their coalescence of the, of the algorithms of what they were dealing with in the 19th century to overcome alienation through aesthetics and a sense of participation was um, a legacy now. Um, colors, this is a Joseph Albers early piece working out just the known structures of the color wheel. Um, uh, Bauhaus bowls with napkins aiming at a simplicity, um, much like the Japanese simplicity. Um, uh, Bauhausian objects, uh, Bauhaus, Bauhaus, um, a working out of form, endless form. Um, uh, I tend to like slab work rather than wheel work. Um, some slab work things, I'll sketch ideas first and then move through them. Kind of the brighter side of modernity um, um, inspired by uh, Danish design. Uh, you even see with the IKEA aesthetic is reapplying kind of a highbrow version of Danish uh, modern 
which was meant for the middle class, and you can see this in middle class houses, reapplied to the masses in the form of Ikea. Um, a lessee teapot designed by Aldo Rossi, the Italian sense. Oh no, sorry, Michael Graves. A lessee water kettle, the American. Um, um, so you see endless forms in prints, simple forms, Japanese uh, bowls and mugs, simple solutions that still give you that gut punch. If you encounter this on an uh, air, uh, airplane ride and see something well designed, you go still go, you know, for a second, the immediate way that the body is perceiving these things. Um, um, floral arrangement in Japan is meant to have rules, but to also express yourself outside of the rules. The same thing applied. The rule is to approach nature, then back away from it. Here's another example of that. Uh, the Roku is really raw to, on the wabi-sabi, yin-yang way, is to, to embrace the rough. And out of that emerges the beautiful. Um, um, again, the wabi-sabi of... Uh, uh, handmade stuff as contrasted to the 3D printed, but we do see in Chinese pottery a, a return to the rigid um, forms. Here's Japanese sake glass. Um, uh, uh, Japanese and Koreans tend to defer to the rougher side. <coughs> Modern Chinese teapot uh, filled with holes. How does it work? We don't know. Is it a light? Doesn't matter. The roughness against the refined, that this is 3D printed, I'm sure. These are back to Joseph Albers, Annie Albers' husband, um, working out um, patterns um, in this. Uh, there are patterns in music. Here's one of the Bauhausian women in an Oscar Schlemmer um, head piece for his theater. Um, and so forth, furniture, uh, utensils. This is the Bauhaus. This is um, uh, uh, not uh, Adolf Luz. This is Gropius against one of his first buildings. He's one of the Bauhaus guys kicked. He was the leader kicked out after 2032 by the fascists, by the Nazis, and came to America and started the department at GSD at Harvard that there was a, an embrace of this, these new forms, uh, Annie Albers, um, embrace of new forms in America, in Brazil, in Latin America, in Mexico. The mo modernist architecture in Mexico is amazing. Uh, let's go over here. Back quickly, remaining time to nervous systems. Um, uh, online design apps. Let's try it again. Uh, we made a ring yesterday. Let's do something. Um, can we do clothing? Uh, I like this. I like showing students the necklace, how this changes, boo tie. Um, let's see if we can make lamps. Um, STL file, you can include this in your, your thing. So let's go back. Uh, let's see if this has an open portal. Um, yes, it does. Uh, garment shape. Let's try. All right, next. Uh, oh, this is a new thing. So we watch this going on. Um, please play around with this in nervous systems, the kinematics cloth. Each one of these things is a hinge made. Uh, brush size bigger. Modules. Let's bring her over. Let's put me off because I'm frozen. Um, module size. Let's increase this. Uh, pattern, textile structure. Uh, black. Yep. That's a prom dress. There we go. Um, I'm 
makes a real big, not a lot of holes. Maybe not a lot of flex, but I'd hate to sit on a trainer plane with this save garment. Um, um, this is really rigid at first. Uh, name your design. I'm trying to first prom dress. Your e that says save that. That wasn't much. Oh, they want me to log in. Okay, submit. Um, I've got an account here, so let's get the heck out of here. Um, let's go back to um, that was somewhat fun. Um, we have earrings, laser cut, wood jig, jigsaw puzzles, which is done by CNC. Let's look at this. Uh, okay, as we move the new studio in the summer and fall of 2019. We assume they moved. Uh, whatever. Maybe they haven't. Um, here is a reapplication of this. Um, oh, come on here. There we go. Um, rounding the corner here for our time. I like asymmetry, but I like a sense of balance on sides. Um, uh, let's try this. This is how it looks here, according to what I did. Uh, let's, ooh, look at the, the, let's get something eccentric going here. Um, up here, you wear this at a cocktail party. Um, where we did select a style, uh, density tools, what does this mean? Um, again, I like this eccentricity going on here also use that as a weapon. I'm just kidding. Um, moving it in, what's it look like here? Flipping it around. Um, you've done the ring. We're doing uh, something bigger. We did a dress. Um, what are we deleting? Can we delete these? Yep. Um, Yeah, I like this asymmetry. But what's my delete? Quite no, I'm gonna keep this circular thing going. Okay, material. It's already seventy-one bucks. Ships in three weeks. They said they were down since. Here's where you clip it onto your neck. They said they were down until, um, uh, what you call it, until. 2019, but that's been passed. Maybe they haven't. Um, let's densify. That's really weird, doing something weird out there. Um, flip that around. We are approaching um, an hour here in the thing. It's 71 bucks. What is this going to be in black 3D printed nylon? Do we have other choices? There's red, it'll look good on a white outfit. Very striking, give you the ooh, value. Um, sharp, smooth, roundness on the inside, crystal. Ooh, that's beautiful. Um, I do like the crystal look. Um, and we have some sort of raised thing going on here. And all of these are hinged. There is my expensive um, necklace to market and I will and I want you guys to make a screen capture of it don't buy it if you want to buy it buy it but this is the online JavaScript version of making this stuff um, and so forth so we will end it here we went from studying um, how you impose a sense of order over the universe, what 
kind of gut punches you get from things people already made, or my roses outside are just so beautiful, huge rose bush. Um, what kind of gut punch you take from nature and reality and other people and beautiful people and ugly people and what kind of joy or embodiment you get that, what sort of corrosive forces like this increased quantification, increase uh, 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 um, rigidity from neoliberal capitalism to turn everything into numbers, everything into use. How can we defy that and reconnect with our sense of embodied happiness by, uh, it, as in this, superimposing um, our orders over universe, making things, the pleasures and satisfactions of making things. And what we have to do to um, get back to a very positive designer mind in what we do. So that is it for now. I hope you learned a lot there. We went through th from Bella Figura to um, the way we look at cities like Rome, um, how we imp using new tools in cell phones to reapply over, and how we either come out in the form of sketches or in the form of of online um, uh, 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 JavaScript ways of doing code and, and shipping these things off and having them 3D printed. It's a beautiful century. All right, talk to you soon.